Hello everyone, today we will be talking about examination of a skin lesion. So basically this is dermatology. So my main focus was examination, now I will just like to briefly talk on the history taking. So what you need to ask is where is the lesion, so what is the site of the initial lesion and subsequent distribution. How long has it been there, has it been there continuously or intermittent, as in has it been coming and going or has it just been there trend so from the time it started has it gotten better has it gotten worse then previous episodes so you need to ask if they had a similar lesion in the past when was it how long did it stay was it similar was it not similar do you have any other skin conditions then does anybody else in the family have that same lesion similar lesions then symptoms so you need to ask on the symptoms so you need to ask if there's itching burning scaling or any blister formation did they take any medication recently that may have led to the development of the lesion or have they taken any medication to heal the uh, to heal the current lesions then treatment so did they get any treatment like prescription from the doctor or over the counter medications frequency or time course when did they take it how long did they take it for were they compliant all these questions are very important then you need so let's learn the language of the dermatology exam so a few things you need to make sure you notice is the morphology the size the demarcation the color secondary morphology and distribution so let's look at it into more detail so primary morphology so as you know okay so one thing i need to mention is i have made another video in dermatology that's basically talking about the types of lesions with images and a bit of description if you're interested kindly go through it so here i'll just talk about them roughly like i won't be very detailed so primary morphology is the macula, which is basically a flat lesion less than one centimeter and one thing you need to take note is without elevation or depression so it's just flat so what they mean is if you close your eyes and put your hand above it you are not really going to notice it because it's not flat or it's not elevated neither is it depressed a patch flat lesion greater than one centimeter without elevation or depression so the difference between macula and patch is basically just the size macula is less than one centimeter and patch is greater than one centimeter plaque flat elevated lesion usually greater than one centimeter i hope you have taken note of the word elevated lesion then a papule elevated solid lesion less than one centimeter so if you take notice the difference between papule and plaque is that's less papule is less than one centimeter and plaque is greater than one centimeter nodule elevated solid lesion greater than one centimeter so another thing you need to take note is solid lesion elevated solid lesion that's a nodule okay vesicle elevated fluid filled lesion usually less than one centimeter so if they ask you what's the difference between a papule and a vesicle they're both elevated they're both less than one centimeter the difference is papule is a solid lesion and vesicle is a fluid filled lesion pustule elevated pustule lesion usually less than one centimeter so basically pustule even though what has it pus bulla elevated fluid filled lesion usually greater than one centimeter so let's look at some diagrams. So there's a bureau, comedon, macule. Macule is worth less than one centimeter. We've got papilloma, papule, petechia and purpura, plaque, pistil, scale, telangiectasia, which is basically dilated vessels, vesicle, a wheel. So let's go. So first thing we were talking about was the primary morphology. The second thing is size. So in size you need to know how small is it. So maybe you can use a ruler to measure. So, so how small so example is superficial spreading melanoma you're able to see the size right then how large example is acral lentiginous melanoma you can see it's quite big so basically you need to know the size size is very important demarcation is it well demarcated is it not well demarcated so are you able to see the cellulitis on the first image yeah that's erysipelas so you can see it's very well demarcated however when you look at the second picture that is cellulitis you're able to see that it's not well demarcated it's very irregular so it's not well defined that's an example of cellulitis color again color is very important so i've put a few examples so it can be white, red, purple, brown, yellow, black or blue. 
So purple is in the case of Kaposi sarcomata. The first image shows, then the second image shows Xanthelasma, which is yellow, then the third one shows a black esca. Secondary morphology. So remember the primary morphology was macules, papules, nodules, and stuff like that. Secondary morphology is so is there dry crust, is there fissure, lichenification, erosion, ulceration, scaling? So for all this, if you want proper definitions, you can just look at my other video. Though I did put a brief definition here. So lichenification, that's basically thickening of the skin, not the accentuation of the skin lines. So what, this is an example of what it can be due to chronic rubbing or lichen simplex chronicus. Then the second image is showing fishes and psoriasis. I also have a video on psoriasis. If you're interested, you can look at that. Then serum, are you able to say on top this dried crust? Yeah, this is impetigo. Then the other picture is erosion. Partial, what is erosion? Erosion is basically partial loss of epidermis. So what can cause that can be scratching, minor skin injury. These are very common. Ulceration. So that's basically full thickness loss of epidermis. Example include pyoderma, gangrenosum, pressure, or decubitus also. Then the next image is showing scaling. Again, this is an example of psoriasis or it could be ichthyosis. Then another thing you need to take note is the distribution of the skin lesion. Is it on the extensor surfaces? Is it generalized? Is it photodistributive? When we say photodistributive, we basically mean that is it in areas where there is more light? Touching or not? So, extensive surfaces is psoriasis. Are you able to see that? Yeah. Then, generalized example, it may be due to viruses or it could be due to a drug reaction. Then, the second image is actually, I don't know if you could have the second or the third, photodistributive. Example include lupus, dermatomyositis. This is basically sun exposed areas. So, according to what we have just learned, are you able to examine the lesion? You're going to include the primary morphology, the size, the distribution, the surfaces, and everything. Are you able to do that? I'll give you 10 seconds to just write it down somewhere, or you can pause the video and write it down. Then we can compare the answers. Can you start a business for as low as $100?